I'm Aaron Ciotti. Everybody calls me Ciotti. I forgot to check my big dumb hair. It looks all right. We're fine tonight. All is well. Welcome to Hydro Wallet Wednesday, yo. Uh, I need to do a little newbie drone order because I don't have the cable that I need to get the footage off of the Waxnail uh, VTX. <laughs> um, I was kind of planning on doing the uh, the walk snail build tonight, the 1S walk snail build tonight, um, but since I have to do a newbie drone order, I might as well get one of the Neutron RC um, AIOs so that I can leave this AIO alone. Um, it's got a uh, it's got the VTX all like neatly tucked in and hooked up to it. Um, so yeah, does anybody need a, uh, Beta FPV 1S cross style AIO with the external, uh, VTX all wired up really nice? All you gotta do is solder up a camera and away you go. Um, this is the, uh, the OVX 300 VTX. It worked really, really well. Uh, somebody buy this off of me, yo. That would be cool. And then I'll use the money for, uh, 
to get another cross. It, I just, I don't, f this, you know, this is all neat and tidy, and it just feels weird to take it all apart. <laughs> I, sh I really should have just left the camera hooked up to it, but I wanted the camera for something else. Um, so yeah, this is the basis of, like, the ultimate race build, right? Because it's the really lightweight AIO, and then it's got the an external VTX that's not going to bleed all over everyone. So yeah, this is, like, a, a, a really good race build. I flew it freestyle. It was totally fine. Uh, it's ELRS. Um, yeah, if anybody's interested, let me know. I, I feel really weird. Uh, it's also on BT 2.0. I feel weird tearing that, uh, tearing that VTX off of there because it's everything is all neat and tidy. <laughs> In the chat, Gusto FPV was first. Pre Professor Biohazard was next. Bob Bruce, uh, Douglas Otwell, Riot Nine farting loudly. Noisy Miner, Flush FPV. Uh, FP Avery, Rock Crawler, Kevin Sumner, Technique, Hush, uh, Northern Tier, Frank Nicholas, Rob Axelson, Mr. Huggy. What's up, everybody? Um, I think Kevin Stump Sumner still has his, uh, his half of his ticket available for Rampage. If anybody wants to go to Rampage last second here, uh, hit up Kevin Sumner. Um, he's got a, uh, an extra bed in his room. Last time I, I checked, he'll post in chat in a second, I'm sure. Uh, look, yo! AOS 3.5 is done. Um, in a minute, I'm gonna pull these motors off of here and start bolting these ducts on. And then we'll throw some props on and we'll get it on the scale. Um, little bit of a fail in trying to get the uh, Nebula Pro camera in here. I could not find a single lens that works, uh, that, that did what I needed from the Nebula Pro camera, which is basically to extend the front of the lens out um, without sacrificing a ton of um, field of view. All of the lenses that I've got, and I took screenshots all of all of them, there will be a Patreon post comparing uh, seven one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different lenses on the Nebula Pro. Um, I've previously done a Patreon post on the DJI camera, the silver camera, comparing a bunch of different lenses there as well. So yeah, a little add on to that, which will be pretty cool. And yeah, it was kind of, I, I was hoping that there would be a lens that would work um, because the, the, the Nebula Pro is lighter than this camera. Although what's interesting is all of the lenses are a lot heavier than the lenses that are included with the Nebula Pro or the DJI camera. Um, so any weight that I would be saving from the Nebula Pro would kind of get eaten up by the big ass lens that I was putting on it. So it, it's kind of fine that I've gone back to this, um, uh, silver bodied DJI camera. Uh, I'm using the, uh, the, the felt tape for the first time on this thing because these arms are so skinny here. Um, I couldn't use army LEDs or anything. Um, so yeah, I used this felt tape, which is pretty cool. Seems pretty nice that that one piece was trying to come off just now, which is alarming, but I'll keep an eye on it. Maybe I just didn't push it down hard enough. Uh, so yeah, we'll get the guards on this and get it on the scale and see what's up. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of wasted space in this frame in the middle here. The, the front and rear 20 by 20 stacks are really separated, which, I mean, from like an ease of building standpoint, I guess is kind of nice because you can just hang a big old capacitor off the back of your ESC here and there's plenty of room for it. Um, but from a... I want my frames to be as light as possible perspective. That's not great. Um, so yeah, just some food for thought. The, this AOS 3.5 frame, yeah, it's 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 got a, a channel here. The, just this whole center area in between these two standoffs is just completely wasted space. I, I, I would prefer the, the frame to be um, narrow where you could probably save four or five grams um, by by pulling this in. What that would do, though, is that it would um, it would pull these. I mean, you could change the geometry to to kind of deal with that, but 
Um, yeah, that's a there's there's food for thought for you. Uh, this is going to be the next uh, chase rig, and it's going to have these uh, prop guards on it, which I'm going to start bolting on in a second here. Um, and yeah. I'm, I'm super interested to see if this is any more or less efficient than the box frames. I have a funny feeling it's going to be a little bit more efficient. Um, I don't know how much more efficient. I did put this on different motors than the box frame, mainly because this is going to be cranking bigger props. Those box frames are um, set up for 2.5 inch propellers. This is a 3.5 inch frame. These prop guards are three and a half inches in diameter and then the inner diameter here is three inch so this is going to be running a three inch propeller so i put bigger motors on it these are unfortunately discontinued um i flight zing 1504 3900s so i'm going to be putting a really pitchy probably a gem fan 3052 uh three inch prop on this um to try to make the you know 3900 kv is a little bit low i really prefer like 4500 ish um but with the the extra gruntiness of the motors we can run a prop that's more pitchy to to make up for that slightly lower kv um so yeah that's what's kind of going on here uh i have to do so yeah I, I have to do a newbie drone order so we're gonna bounce around the newbie drone website we're gonna look at their new releases section talk about some stuff if you guys have any questions if there's any products on newbie drones website that you don't know what the hell they do or you're curious if they're good or not, um, yeah, now's your chance for us to kind of talk about that. Uh, we'll throw this thing into beta flight real quick and do a really fast setup. It, it's, it's actually kind of already set up, I think, because this flight controller and ESC are out of another build. Um, this is an ESC that I think was dropping an arm. Uh, I believe it's BL Heli S. And on Blue Jay, and I'll bet you it's on Blue Jay 0 0.17, 0 0.18, 0 0.19, uh, so we can potentially fix another BL Heli S ESC by backdating it to 0.16. Um, I'm not gonna get to fly this uh, today, but yeah, we can we can at least take a look at that, and then uh, maybe I'll maiden this at Rampage. I don't really know. Um, I don't think I'm gonna have time tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm gonna have to. Tomorrow's gonna be a, a mad scramble to get packed and and ready to go although maybe not because i'm i'm literally just going to take a couple plastic tubs and just dump all my shit in them um i'm not gonna like thoughtfully prepare for rampage i'm just throwing all my shit in bins um and just driving it up there and then at uh uh at the hotel room at uh micro mayhem I'll just unload all my shit, and any of you that are coming can rifle through a whole bunch of these builds. I, 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 I seriously think that I might just take all of these and just throw them all in a big bin and just bring them. And, you know, if I fly them, great. If not, that's fine, too. If, if somebody, you know, is fondling one of my builds and they learn something, that's kind of awesome. Um... So, yeah, that's kind of the plan for today and tomorrow. Uh, of course, this is a Q&A stream, as they all are. And then a uh, little quick mailbag stream. You guys probably know what's in this, but this is from Juicy FPV. Actually, you know what? I stole that from Mighty Car Mods. Uh, you should be subscribed to them here on YouTube. They are the best. Oh, fuck. It's always so satisfying when you do this. Uh, Juicy FPV sent me a little present to get me kicked off on my little walk snail adventure. Um, very, very, very appreciated, brother. And uh, yeah, it arrived yesterday. And here it is, yo. Um, so, Bot Grinder slash Captain Cannoli sent me a bunch of DJI stuff, uh, last week. Goggles, uh, a 1S VTX and camera, and then two of the version 1, um, VTXs and cameras. Eh. And now in this package, we've got... 
<gasps> the cable! Oh my god, technically I don't have to do a newbie drone order now. Uh, juicy, thank you so much, dude. Um, wow, okay, shit, I, I, I should have opened this before the live stream. Uh, the cable, this is the cable that, that I need. I thought I was gonna have to do an order for this. This is the cable that you need to get the DVR off of the, uh, off of the, um, yeah, off of the board. Um, Juicy, thank you so much. This is another 1S, um, VTX with camera. Very, very, very cool. And so, yeah, now we can do two. Now we can do a 65 millimeter build and a 75 millimeter build, which is just amazing. Like, that's gonna be super nice to be able to compare those head to head rather than tearing one apart. And actually, here's another one. Um, I forgot, that's right, he said he was sending me two. Uh, there's a chance one of these will end up in a- Oh, 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 this one has the, uh, the little heat sink removed. You know what? Uh, Joshua and I were talking about this earlier today. Uh, wondering what these di what the weight difference is with and without the, uh, the little, uh, jib-jab. You know what I'm saying? The jib-jab, right? Let's take a look right now. This is not going to be a perfect comparison because there are... There's a little length of wire on each one of these. Oh, the camera is lighter, too. Oh, okay. So the one with the... Okay. All right, all right, all right. I see, I see. And it looks like they, they kind of glue these camera connectors on. Um, as much as I want to remove them to just weigh the VTX, I'm not gonna. So this is the, the light setup, like the actual light setup with a little bit of 30 gauge wire on it. Um, and this is coming in at 7.6 grams, which is just hysterically light. And then this is the regular 1S setup with the, the heat sink here and with the camera that has screw holes in the side. And this guy is 10.2, it looks like. Let me just double check that. Yeah, 10.2, 10.1. So 10.1 versus 7.6. So, uh, basically what I'll do is this light one is gonna go on a 65 millimeter rig, and then this other one is gonna go on a 75 millimeter rig. Uh, that's kind of perfect because, you know, I mean, that makes sense. The, the 75 rigs are gonna be able to pick up the, uh, the heavier camera, then you can run like a, a more normal camera mount. I don't know how the hell I'm gonna mount this, I don't know what I'm gonna mount this camera in, uh, it's actually got screw holes. Nope, it won't work. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how I'm gonna mount this this light camera. There's no screw holes in the side or anything like that. I bet you this camera is is a good chunk of the of the weight savings. Anybody anybody know anybody seen any slick ways of of mounting um, this Walksnail light camera? Man, I hope this, I, I hope not having this heat sink doesn't make this thing like overheat all the damn time. I'll, I'll be running it at like 20, at, as low as it'll go basically. Um, so hopefully it'll be okay. But uh, yeah, that'll be kind of annoying if it, if it has overheating issues. Uh, because it's on such a small rig, you know what I mean? But I have a feel, oh man, this is amazing. Uh, I think I still do want to do a, uh, a newbie drone order. Um, because I'm gonna lose this damn thing. And newbie drone also, I've been having a really hard time finding left-hand circular polarized antennas lately. Um, like good ones, uh, that I want. And, uh, I mainly look on GetFPV and Pyrodrone. But, uh, yeah. Might be nice to look on newbie drone, so we'll do that. Uh, hey, if you want to talk directly to me in the chat, all you got to do is type C out of FPV. If you do that, it'll light up an orange, and I'll know that you're talking to me. If you don't do that, I'll assume that you're just talking to each other. Uh, and this is my full-time job. If you like these live streams and would like to see them continue, I do need your help. Um, Patreon is is slowly declining. I don't know what's been going on over the last like month-ish. Uh, but yeah, if you have a couple extra dollars, you can join my Patreon for as little as 10 cents a day. 
um, and it really helps me out the absolute most. The other ways that you can help me out are to buy yourself something nice on Etsy. I got some stickers and some hardware up there. You can also buy yourself some uh, t-shirts and other random stuff over on Teespring. Or you can work directly with me one-on-one -on -one through my Fiverr page. I've been doing this for seven years. I have a lot of knowledge that I can help you out with so that you stop blowing stuff up and catching stuff on fire. Or if you just want to fly better, I can help you out with that. Um, you can really accelerate the amount of knowledge that you've got and, and how good you are in FPV by working one-on-one -on -one with somebody that's been doing it a long time. Um, so, yeah, let me help you get through that and, uh, and get better quick. Uh, and then I've got a whole bunch of affiliate links. Any of these websites, if you hit the affiliate link at any point before you check out, I will get a small percentage of your order. Somebody did a camera butter order the other day. That was very cool of you to remember me. Uh, we bleed FPV, newbie drone, FPV cycle, Amazon, get FPV, oh my god, HD zero, fly, we, max, bang, good camera butter, AliExpress. Uh, if you just replace your bookmarks with these links, then every time you hit your bookmarks, you'll be hitting my affiliate link, and you won't even have to think about it. You just order, and away you go. Uh, and then there's a PayPal button here as well. If you don't want to do a super chat because YouTube will take 30%, you can use that. Uh, so yeah, that's how you guys keep me doing 10 plus hours of live streams a week, every single week. Uh, I'm completely crowdfunded. I do not receive things for free, typically from manufacturers. Um, so if I get something that sucks, I tell you guys that it's a giant steaming pile of ass. I don't sugarcoat it. I don't say... Well, this is kind of good for maybe this person, or maybe that. Like, I'm gonna give it to you straight, and you know that's the benefit of you guys supporting me rather than companies supporting me. So, uh, lots of folks tagging me over in chat. Bob Bruce says, "What's up, CIDFPV and the Gangly Collective?" Speaking of Bob Bruce, he's our newest patron. Patron, welcome to the gangliest of gangs, Bob Bruce. Thank you for hopping on. Uh, also. And Kristen, I'm not going to ruin your last name. And Kristen, thank you for joining the Gangly Gang. And a little bit of Ryan Hall as well. Ryan, thank you for joining the gangliest of all the gangs in the world. Uh, Expedia? What are you, points? I don't have points. What are you saying? What are you saying, Expedia? Uh, let me make sure I didn't get... Uh, I didn't miss anybody. Riot Nine, Riot Nine as well. Thank you for jumping back on to the uh, to the Patreon. I think you hopped off, and and now I think you're jumping back on. Thank you very much for that. Good Lord! I also, what? Why did all these get pushed down like this? MB Steezy, welcome to the Gangly Gang. Thank you for joining up. And then Punkaflugen, Punkalflufen, Punkalflufen, welcome to the Gangly Gang. Thank you for joining the Patreon. You are all the best. Okay, now I'm caught up. Good to go. Sorry, friends. And what's this Flywoo email? Get out of here, Flywoo. Get out of here, Flywoo. Get out of here. Okay, good to go. In the chat, Bob Bruce says, what's up? Uh, Noisy Miner says, hello. Do you have any tips for making myself more gangly? I'm, sure, I'm, I'm kind of short and stumpy. I really want to fit into the gangly gang. Um... <laughs> I mean, the only tip I can personally give you is just have a crazy metabolism. Um, I am not the guy to help you get less gangly. Maybe try that keto stuff that uh, that Joshua is hawking over on uh, over on the news. That that stuff um, is apparently really good, and it's made by an FPV person. Uh, I don't remember what it's called, but I was just watching the news from this week, and and yeah, it's called keto something or other. Uh, I've heard good things about. Keto, actually. Rock Crawler says, Hey, Seattle, FPV, and Gangly Gang. Kevin Sumner says, Are you all packed for Rampage? I haven't even started. <laughs> um, I'm just, yeah, but I'm, I'm going to do like the most half ass packing job ever. Uh, so I'll be fine. Uh, Rob Axison says, Hola, Guapo Gangle. <laughs> Mr. Huggy says, Nice bit of B roll there. I know, right? I can't wait to actually get that into uh, Real Steady and stabilize it up. Uh, Rob Axison says, Got my shipping label to send. Got my shipping label to send my HD Zero goggles in for optic swap. Oh, that's so annoying. Um, I can't imagine, man. I hope, I hope HD Zero survives this. I cannot imagine how much money they're having to spend on this. Kevin Sumner says, "Do you need to borrow one? I have one you can borrow at Rampage until yours comes." Um, uh, I think we were talking about the the cable, so I am now good to go. Thank you, Juicy FPV again. Technique says, "Rob Oxes, and if it's CID FPV related, I already know I'm gonna like it." 
uh, we're talking about gotta watch the stream first all right uh kevin sumner says uh nope all locked down oh nice okay so uh yeah kevin sumner's other um bed in his room at rampage is taken very cool very 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 cool uh, Mama Sita one 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 says, "What's your top tips when looking to buy your first quad new and used retail and custom builders? Uh, if you get one, if you can get one used, that's probably a really good deal. I mean, one of the things you're gonna have technically you don't have to, but realistically you have to resign yourself to like FPV is a is a very DIY thing, right? So." Buying something brand new and then like having some kind of a warranty doesn't really exist because you're gonna smack it into the concrete pretty quick and nobody's gonna really cover that. So you might as well save money and buy something used. A lot of times used, the only problem is a lot of times used stuff is being sold because it doesn't work right. Um, but you're gonna have to learn to fix this stuff anyway. Like, so uh, yeah, I think it's worth it. With, with used stuff, what I would say is like, Explain to the person selling it like, hey, I'm brand new. And just like, even like ask them like, hey, can can I'm brand new. Can you help me? Like, can you set it up so that it'll be easier for me to use or and maybe like bounce a couple questions off of them. Um, most people in this hobby are, are super willing to to help new folks out because we've all been new before and it's miserable. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think you use you'll definitely save a ton of money. Um, in terms of what to buy, it's kind of all about where you're going to fly. If you have a huge field right by wherever you live, uh, where people are not going to be getting upset about the noise that 5-inch rigs make, um, yeah, a 5-inch rig might work. 3-inch uh, builds are a little bit harder to work on, uh, a little bit harder to maintain, but they're, you can fly them in many more locations because they're not so loud, they're not so dangerous. Um, tiny Whoops, I'm a really big fan of Tiny Whoops to get people into the hobby because um, you can fly them in your house. You can fly them anywhere. Like It's hard to fly in your house, um, so it could get a little bit frustrating, but Jesus, the whole hobby is frustrating. So like, if you quit because it's too frustrating to fly in your house... You probably just saved yourself a whole bunch of money um, because you probably wouldn't have survived the hobby anyway because it's so frustrating. So, um, yeah. Uh, and then there's lots of beginner kits out. Emacs has a, a really nice beginner kit. Newbie Drone. Excuse me. Newbie Drone also has a nice beginner kit. Um, and then there's tons of content here on YouTube about like how to get started into FPV. So... Um, yeah, those are going to be some of my suggestions. I would watch t minimum like 10 videos here on YouTube about how to get started into FPV first to really get a feel for it, to get a bunch of different options. And then, um, away you shall go. And, uh, yeah, just understand that it, it's a very frustrating hobby, but it is worth it. Um, if you stick with it, you will get to fly. You, you will get to do the one, like... You will get to experience flight in a way that nobody else on Earth can. Um, in the, the safest possible way. And it's just... It's it's worth it. It's it's worth it. it it's going to be frustrating. You're going to want to quit. Um, but it's, it's really worth it in my... And pretty much everybody that's still in the hobby's opinion. Um, so stick with it. Because, yeah, after six months to a year... When you're, like, really able to confidently fly... Um, it's... Yeah, your brain legitimately thinks that you're flying through the air like an actual bird. And it's like, wow, okay, that's an experience that you just can't get anywhere else. You can't jump out of a plane and get that experience because you're just falling. You can't really fly an airplane and get that experience because it's, it's just an infinite amount of money and you're in an airplane, right? It's like the difference between driving a car and riding a motorcycle. Um, it's just they're completely different things. So, yeah. Uh, Freeloja says, did those batteries I sent work for you? They did indeed, Freeloja. Thank you for sending those. Um, Freeloja sent a couple of these really slick little Tattoo uh, 2S 2500 mAh batteries with a little uh, button on them with a, a, a voltage meter. It's just super nice to have. They have barrel plugs on them. 
Um, just great to have a couple extra goggle batteries kicking around. I appreciate that, man. Um, uh, Dino says, I just built an HD Zero Whoop with the same AIO as my HD Zero 65 millimeter bind and fly using 25,000 kV motors some, uh, and somehow getting less thrust than the bind and fly that has 19,000 kV motors, no throttle limit. Uh, man, there, there are a lot of things that could be causing that problem, you know. Uh, so it could be an ESC related issue, like if the if the one is on like 48 kilohertz and the other is on 24 kilohertz, that could have something to do with it. Um, it could also be PID loop related. Like if, if the PID loop is angry and the tune is too cranked up, too aggressive for the, the amount of vibrations that are getting into the gyro, um, the, the motors will be spinning up and down, up and down, up and down, and up and down 4,000 times a second. And that's going to get them hot and they're going to saturate and they're not going to make much power. Um, so that could be it. Uh, the gyro on the 25,000 KV rig could just be on its way out or the FETs could be on their way out. You know, with, with tiny whoops, it's really tough because most of them don't have black box. So we're very limited on how, and, and yeah, like how we can troubleshoot. Uh... Do this, take the propellers off. Take the propellers off of both rigs, put them into beta flight, put them into the motors tab, hook, hook batteries up and, and spin the motors up with no propellers all the way up. Each individual motor, one, two, three, four. All four motors, they're gonna go a, a lower KV motor is gonna go a higher KV motor is, should go Right, like, first of all, make sure that all four motors on each rig are roughly spinning up to the same RPM. If RPM filtering is turned on, you're actually gonna have an RPM measurement number in there, but if it's not turned on, you can just do it by ear. Um, so yeah, make sure on both rigs, all four motors are spinning up to a similar pitch, a similar RPM and then compare the two rigs to each other. If the two, what, what the motors tab does is it takes the PID loop out of the equation and it just puts power to the motors. So it's gonna tell you if you've got a motor that's bad or if you've got an ESC FET that's bad or if everything is fine. If everything is fine and all four motors spin up to the same RPM, then you're gonna test the one rig versus the other one and the 19,000 kV rig should go and then the 25 should go zzz, right so if that's true if you're if everything is still healthy what you know basically is that the pid loop is the problem with the 25,000 kV rig um, because the the motor again the motors tab and the motor sliders take the pid loop out of the equation and they just test if the motor is healthy and if the ESC fets are healthy um, and then um, so, so here's what the PID loop does, man, it, it, it could, there's so many things that it could be. It's, it's, I'm, I'm really trying my best to not overwhelm you and, and just target you in on the things that like most commonly happen. The PID loop runs at either four or six, I'm sorry, four or 8,000 cycles a second. So bare minimum 4,000 times a second. The PID loop, which is basically error correction, is checking in with the gyro, checking in with the motors, spinning some motors up, spinning some motors down. If you have a motor that's bad, uh, if you have a motor that's weak, 4,000 times a second, this error correction loop is looking at that motor and seeing like, oh, like it's sending power to the motor and then it's not getting as much thrust as it thinks it should. And then it's limiting the other motors to match it up with that motor. And you can't see that happen because human human response time is like a, a, a like 0.4 of a second, and this is running at 4,000 times a second, so it's imperceptible to us. Um, and so that could be the problem if you have one motor or one ESC FET that are weak. 
it's going to cripple the other three motors so that the and and that's a good thing because the the rig is going to fly ryan says unless it's a bmi right sort of yeah bmis run at like 3.2 k so 3200 cycles per second regardless we're talking thousands of cycles per second um which is completely imperceptible it happens without us knowing it just does it and it's it's why the the pid loop and the error correction work so well is because they just cycle so fast right um so there's the I, I just wanted to give you a little bit of info as to what the hell's happening um with the the pid loop and why testing the motors in the way that i explained is is a really good idea so yeah there's a bunch for you to do um once you've done that you'll be much closer to kind of figuring this out um and maybe if you were able to pick up what i was laying down with this big tirade um you'll be able to move forward with the with the troubleshoot uh if not let me know and we can uh, we can keep going I'm trying to figure it out um or if you just want to knock it out all at once i have the fiverr uh up linked over at cidfpv.com you can buy a half an hour of my time we can do a video call and just knock it out one on one um it's pretty hard to, to troubleshoot this stuff through the internet. It's not impossible, um, but it's it's a little difficult. So, uh, yeah, if uh, if you don't have time or patience for a potential week or two troubleshoot, especially because I'm about to get super busy, um, yeah, we can uh, we can find another way. So this is an M three by eight. I wonder if this is going to be long enough to get through the duct and then into the motor. I bet you it's not. Hold on, let me grab one of the extra, extra arms that I've got for the AOS. So I'm gonna jump back into chat in a second, but I wanna start screwing these things on. Um, so let me take a quick look. Uh, so this is my preferred way to kind of check your um, check that your screws are not going to drive themselves into the winding of the motors. You just take a naked arm, you put the screw through the arm. If you've got a duct, you, you put the duct on. Did they really size these holes so small in these guards that you have to screw them in? I'm going to be honest, that's kind of annoying. Um, so yeah, you put it in there and then you just look at the amount of threads that are kind of hanging out on top there and uh this ain't right you know what's funny about this is so this is an m2 by 8 i also have m2 by 10s but i have not had m2 by 9s um a week or two ago i had an issue where i needed m2 by 9s and i ordered a bag of them off of amazon <laughs> it was not for this build it's for a completely different build um so this is kismet yo I've got exactly what I need right here. Uh, so yeah, if you're going to copy this build, you need to get yourself some M2 by 9 hardware. Uh, and I don't. I think I'm going to go through so much. This is a bag of 50. I think I'm going to use more of these. And usually I'll, I'll get like bags of 50 or 100. I'll use like 8. And then I'll offer the rest to you beautiful people. Or I'll put them up on my... Uh, 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 it's, it's a lot. There's a shit little hardware up on the Etsy store, but in this case, I'm gonna use a ton of these. So you go to hell, you die, you get none of these, you bastards, greedy pigs. <laughs> I don't know why I just attacked you guys like that. That was unwarranted. <laughs> Welcome to Scotty FPV, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody who's been around for a long, for a while is used to that sort of abuse. Uh, <laughs> Keto Chow, thank you, Kevin Sumner. Keto Chow, that's it. Frank Nicholas dropping the CIDFPV.com link. Thank you so much, dude. Athix FPV says uh, the Walksnail light cam needs a mount like the War Pig that holds it by the lens. That's what I'm doing. Okay. Oh. I'm just going to put it... Oh, there's going to be duct in view. I was about to say, I'm just going to put it in a um, um, a McStinky mount. Uh, but the McStinky mount sits so low. Oh! Oh! Of course. I'm going to end up putting it in a fractal frame. Almost certainly. Um, and the fractal frame has this the silly little TPU holder. 
I did want to put it in a, a non-fractal frame, though. So, I don't know. I'll play with it next week. That's what she said. Um, uh, I did want to... Uh, I did want to get it done for Micro Mayhem because it's so small in there and digital systems uh, do really well at uh, GTI with all the multipathing. I'm not doing it in this live stream. Maybe I'll do it. Maybe I'll start this build tonight and finish it tomorrow. I, I don't know. I'll, I'll see how I feel. Um, but let me fart around with this a little bit. Uh, first, I don't know what I, I should not have prioritized this build. Uh, there was kind of no reason for me to prioritize this build. I, I just, I woke up on Monday, Monday morning. I woke up like for some reason, very motivated to do this build. And I was like, and, and that's pretty rare. Like I really struggle for motivation to build. Um, so I was like, well, if, <laughs> if I'm motivated to do this build right now, I better get to work on it. Um, because this motivation will not last long. <laughs> um, so I, I just kind of like dove right headfirst into it. Um, and kind of spent more time than I should have uh, this week on this build. But, you know, hey. Whatever. It's all got to get done at some point anyway. Okay, so these GEPRC arm... Guards go. So you can kind of adjust where the standoffs sit. So if I'm flying this thing forward and somebody bumps into it, I want the standoff to be the the standoff here, like the one, two, three, these little guys. Um, I want it to be facing rearwards, not like that. Maybe like that. I think that's the right one. What about like this? Oh, that's the right way. That's the way I want it. Okay. So I want it on those those holes there. Okay. So this goes through here. Yeah, that's exactly what I want. Um, so yeah, those guys go through there. And... I'm going to have to screw them in because Gaparsi made these, the holes in these damn things a little too small. Get in there. Get in there. Okay, cool. All right. And then this one here. Come on. Come on, little fella. Get in there. Get in there. Little buddy, get in there. <laughs> Uh, come on. Oh my god. Oh my god, these guards are already being annoying. Ugh, or is it me that's being annoying? A little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. There it is. Okay. So, let me just check that real quick here. Um... Okay. I don't love that. I was trying to get this facing like perfectly downwards. That's kind of fine. Like what I'm what I'm most worried about is I'm nose down and a cyclist comes into me like this. I want the maximum amount of protection. Um, which is why I chose to build this frame with the arms on the bottom rather than the arms on the top, which is what I was thinking about doing uh, previously. So, let me do this. I'm going to put uh, screws on the other side. And I'm going to rot I'm going to put another duct on and a guard on and I'm going to rotate it a little bit differently and we'll see uh, which one I like better. Uh, Douglas Otwell says, "Do I need to learn to fly outdoors before flying indoors?" Absolutely not. Um, Although it is easier to fly outdoors because you've got 11 billion miles of, of vertical real estate. Um, but yeah, you absolutely do not need to. Uh, Professor Biohazard says, The pitch axis on my 5-inch flutters 
and an arm seems to drop a little during prop watch. Should I try going down to Blue Jay point one six? Uh, how do you know that the pitch axis flutters? How have you figured that out? Black box? Or does it just look like it flutters? Um, because, man, is it hard to, to like, really narrow that down. It's very, very difficult to, uh, to figure that out. Quad66 is in the chat. Very cool to have him here. If you guys are not subscribed to Quad66, I'm going to just beat you to death. That's all there is to it. Because it, it, he's got one of the best YouTube channels for micros. And uh, he doesn't get nearly enough love. So get your ass over there and subscribe, and uh, you can thank me later. And and I'll think about not <laughs> beating you. <laughs> um, yeah, he is uh, one of the better testers, pilots, uh, thinkers when it comes to uh, micros, and you're going to learn a lot from him. And, uh, yeah, that's super important. I learn a lot from them. All right, so this is the other way to rotate this. I do not like it. I do not like that. I do not like it rotated that way. Uh, let me pull this off. And I'm going to spin this 90 degrees. And I'm going to force these through a little bit. Now I'm going to take a look at that. Nope, don't like that one either. Don't like that orientation. Nope, 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 nope. And then I can also do it like this. Okay. All right. And that would be the same orientation on the other side, which might be the way to go. Uh, but let's try it. The one last way here. And that puts the support. Ooh, I think I like that one the best. I think I like that one the best. So in the rearward, yep, 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 yep. That is the most vertical rotation. See what I mean? So that'll be the strongest if it does take a hit. And then the motor wires will not get in the way. Okay, yep, so this is the this is the orientation here. All right, cool, so let me fire these screws through here just to kind of hold this in place. Well, I mean, I might as well throw the motor on while I'm here. Uh, uh, Athex FV says, what are you wanting to put the 1S Walksnell VTX on? Um, uh, RC drift car chasing rigs, basically. 60, uh, there's going to be one that's going to go on a 65 millimeter rig and another on a 75 millimeter rig. Dino says, okay, awesome. Thanks for all the troubleshooting. Both are on stock Betaflight 4.4. Dino says, so I just tested the motors in Betaflight. One motor is rotating at 10,000 uh, less RPM than the other four, so clearly it's an ESC SU time, time to order another motor. Not necessarily. It could be a motor problem. Take two of the motors, Dino, but remember, write down which one is less, take two of the motors and swap them and see if the problem chases the motor or stays with the ESC channel. You have not, you have, you've not figured out quite yet that it's an ESC issue. It could be a motor problem. So do that. Swap two of the motors, see if the problem chases or stays. Then you'll know if it's ESC or motor. Bob Bruce says, emotional damages. El, uh, El Mayo. Love it. Hilarious. Adik says, uh, the ringleader of the shit show. I remember the socks. I, dude, that's weird that you mentioned that uh, because I wore those socks yesterday. And I haven't worn them in a while because they're really thin. Very thin socks. Strange. The gangly gang works in mysterious ways, apparently. Um, is this motor wire going to be cool or is this going to be a dick? Nah, it's being cool. All right. Are the motor wires going to reach? Is the next question? Oh, yeah, they reach. Just right. Emotional damage. I think it's singular. It's emotional damage, right? Not damages. I could be wrong. 
so the next thing we're going to do is crank two of these motor screws down and make sure that they don't peek through the, the stator base too far. Nah, we good. Well, hold on. Hold on. Oh, this is like really important to, to be super careful with this. Oh, man, they stick through a bunch. Um, so certain motors will have windings closer to the uh, closer to the stator base than others. So every motor is a little bit different. Oh, boy. Maybe uh, M2 by 8 would have been the right decision. Let's put a third screw in here. Emotional damage. Uh... Bob Bruce says, I'm never motivated to build until I start and then I have trouble stopping. Ethan W. says, what is the most ugly car in your opinion? I think it's the PT Cruiser. Um... Oh, man, there's so much worse than the PT Cruiser. I mean, the PT Cruiser might hold the crown for, like, the ugliest car of our generation. But, like, oh, man, there there are so many. A lot of, like, Russian cars that are just awful. Pretty much everything made by Lada is terrible, which is a Russian car company. Um, we, gotta, we have to narrow it down. Let's narrow it down to American cars. Um... I mean, pretty much everything Dodge makes, <laughs> Plymouth Dodge, whatever you want to call them, um, is pretty awful. Um, I'm trying to think of like a real standout, though, like a really, really ugly, just full-blown uggo spec. These are just, I, I just can't believe how strong these these plastic guards are. I mean, they're 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 still limited by the fact that they're only mounted by the center here, right? So like, they're they're gonna move like this. But I mean, them moving like this in theory is gonna keep them from breaking, right? Ben, don't break, kind of thing. Uh, we're just gonna keep going here. Um, Ray Waz says, hi all, first time making a CIDF PV live stream. Welcome, Ray. This is um, a little bit less structured of a stream. I'm, I'm um, Usually I have like a, a much more clear, clearly defined topic and whatnot, but this has been a crazy week, and uh, with Rampage coming up, um, yeah, I just, I'm, uh, yeah, it's a weird one, but... Glad to have you here. Hope you're enjoying yourself. Um, how the hell? Okay, so that would mean clocking it like this. That's the same, right to left. Okay, cool. All right. Shoot these through here. Okay, what else? Uh, CMYK FPV is in the house as well. He says, have you tried flashing ELRS on R9 FR Sky receivers at all? Uh, I found a few and want to try ELRS out. I have not. Um, but if you want an R9 module, a full-size R9 module to try that on, I'll send it to you. Chris, I, I have a, uh, a, a shipping label sitting here that I printed out. Um, I just had to print another shipping label because the label sheets are two up. So I just printed a CMY cable, CMYK label out because I feel like I'm sending him stuff every couple of weeks uh, because he's a good dude and he does all my graphic design. And if you need graphic design work done and you go to anyone other than him, I'll burn you. I will burn you in your face so that everybody can see it. They're all gonna laugh at you. You guys remember that? Nobody remembers that. Somebody remembers that. Somebody just somebody's head just exploded. What is this? Tree. Um. 
Uh, Ethan, I'll get back to you on the ugliest car. Actually, no, I'll forget. I gotta, uh, I gotta put, put one, I mean, the, the Pontiac Aztec is roundly regarded as, as one of the ugliest, if not the ugliest cars, all, but, but that's too easy. That's, I'm trying, and the PT Cruiser is kind of too easy, too. Like, I'm, I'm, I, I, I want to... I want to wow you guys with my car knowledge and, and hit you with the true ugliest car ever. Uh, hmm. You know what? That's a good Google search. It's a good Google search right there. That's what that is. Ugliest American car ever. PT Cruiser will certainly be on here. <laughs> there it is. There's the Aztec. Uh, uh, yeah, the 70s Mustangs are pretty awful, but I mean, I don't know. Not that bad. Pacer, uh, yeah, that's pretty ugly. Oh, there it is. There it is, and just like that, the, the so that's not the Catfish Camaro. Um, but, yeah, I find this to be... Oh, Siri, stop listening to me. I find this to be um, just just awful. The, the, there, and, and just on the inside, it's awful. And the outside is awful. And, like, the Firebird uh, cousin of this is terrible, too. Um, I think that might be it. I think that might be the one right there. That's not even the catfish, and, and this is given a run for its money by the catfish Camaro, which came after this, which was just as awful. Um, that's pretty bad. Wait, I don't, I don't, I don't think we, did we get this? We got the Ford Aspire? No shit. Oh, there's another good one. God damn, the Sunfire is so awful. Oh yeah, that's a good one there. Uh, yeah, you can't... That wasn't a production car, though. You can't fault the EV1. It was built to be fuel efficient. Ah, uh, yeah, I guess. But, I mean, this is such an iconic car that I don't even really consider this ugly. Uh, this is just the 90s right here. This is this is car, this is American car design, design in the 90s epitomized, is the is the Taurus. Um, eh, that's not that bad. That's pretty bad. That's an ugly face right there. Yeah, Olds Aurora, I remember those. Uh, Aztec is number two. PT Cruiser is going to get number one, of course. Yeah, I don't, I don't find the PT Cruiser to be that bad. Um, because, um, when you slam them really low and you put, like, somewhat tasteful wheels on them, they're, like, somewhat... Uh... Yeah, no, they're still awful. <laughs> still pretty awful. Uh, no, yeah, I'm gonna go with the, um, the Catfish Camaro. Uh... Yeah, so this is the, this is the, the generation after this one. I, I don't know which one is worse, but I'm going to go with the, the 90s Camaros, 4th gen and then 5th gen. Uh, I, I just, the interior, the exterior, just, it's just, what the hell, man? Yeah, so that's going to be my answer. <laughs> uh, Northern Tier says the AMC Gremlin was ugly. It was indeed. Lots of ugly cars. My God, so many uggos. Uh, see, uh, we got that. Uh, Ray Waz says, uh, we got that. Bob Bruce says, clock 180, uh, that might be close as well. Um, Brandon's White Beans says, I take your PT Cruiser and Ray... Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. The Chevy HHR. Oh, awful. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The HHR was just gross. Oh, God. Man, Chevy and, G Chevy and Dodge... They are good at making some ugly fucking cars. Good lord. Ray Waz says, uh, why are the only why are you the only UTBR? Oh, YouTuber, uh, talking about the Blue Jay issue. Uh, at least that I've seen any anyway. Seems pretty important to me. Uh, I have no idea. I I cannot believe that the problem dates all the way back to 0.17. And we're just figuring it and, and, and I'm just seeing it now. That's nuts. 
because it's with 0 0.17, 0 0.18, and 0.19. I think the reason is that people are blaming the hardware because the 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 way that the Blue Jay problem presents itself when you troubleshoot it it leads you down a troubleshooting path that says your ESC is failing. It, it acts exactly as a failing ESC would. So I, I think the situation is that just a lot of people are thinking that their BL Heli S ESCs have shit the bed and they're replacing the ESC and hopefully they're replacing it with something different and it doesn't seem to affect all of the ESCs. So then they're putting a different ESC on that maybe doesn't have the issue and all is right with the world. Um, but, yeah. It's affecting a bunch of ESCs already for me. So, we'll, we'll see. Uh, Frontline says, what's up, dude? Uh, love the loves, man. Love the lives, man. Thank you. Glad to have you. Ryan, uh, Ryan says, Adam Sandler album. Yep. <laughs> I'm going to laugh at you. Sandler at his best. Yeah, it really was. Really was Sandler at his best. Um, I'm sad that that album is not on uh, Spotify. Because I don't think I have the CD of it anymore. Uh, I'm sure it's on YouTube, though. Bob Bruce says, man, that sucks. I'm going to be picking up uh, 96Z28. I can't pass up the price. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a Ford guy. I, I am admittedly a, a Ford guy, so I'm, don't don't listen to me. <laughs> Bugs FPV says, 89 Civic EF. Is that the boxy one? Yeah, it's pretty ugly. That's pretty ugly. Uh, wait, what says Subaru SVT? I actually don't hate the SVT. Um, Ray Waz says Ford Granada. That's yeah, pretty ugly. Jeff Edwards says Saab. Mm. Some, uh, th there's some Saabs that I'm into. Kevin Sumner says Chevy SSR. It's another terrible one, the SSR. CV says, how about Ford Pinto? Ugly and deadly. <laughs> yeah. God, they're just, yeah, they're, they're so, like... Car design is hard. I, I I'll give it up to the I'll, I'll give it up, man. It, it is tough to design, um, to design a uh, a car that doesn't look awful. There's some there's some recent cars that are that are really disgusting looking too. Uh, but that's a part of the whole like movement towards making cars look like spaceships to try to, you know, keep up with basically tesla <laughs> uh there's some there's some nissans that are real fucking ugly uh just real 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 ugly lately uh but you know hey and what's insane is like they have these commercials like car designers can design art why don't they look at our car Ugh. like ooh. Look at what our artists designed. Like, oh, God, no, 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 no. Just because it looks weird doesn't mean it looks good. All right, so I'm trying an M2 by eight. Uh, Bugs FPV says the new Rivian electric truck is ugly. I've seen two of the Rivians. I don't think they look that bad. All right, so. So when I crank this M2 by eight down, what I like to see, the way that I check the, the, the motor screw lengths, what I like to see is a little bit peeking through. If there's no screw peeking through, it worries me. And in this case, there's no screw peeking through on the M2 by eight. So I'm not gonna run these M2 by eights because the other thing you want to remember is that the, the tip of the M2 screws is a little bit tapered. So you're not going to get thread engagement all the way up to the tip. So if, if you're not seeing at least a little bit of the screw coming through, then you're probably only engaging like half of the threads on the stator base. Some motors have big thick stator bases, and in that case you're probably okay. These motors do not. These motors have a pretty thin... Uh, stator base motor mount threaded plate area and so yeah I'm gonna go with the m2 by nines they only peek through a little bit and um, the motor manufacturers 
put a little bit of silicone around the um, uh, the windings that the screws are going to be pushing up into. So as long as you don't really drive the screws super far in, you're fine. The, the screws can can peak up a little bit, and you're going to be okay um, because they're just going to push into that little bit of silicone insulation. Um, and I'm going to the the right screw length for this setup here would actually be an M2 by eight and a half, but they don't, the half sizes don't exist. So uh, this M2 by nine should be completely fine. Um, you'll know it if you have screws pushing into the windings, it's very obvious. The motors get really hot. The rig does not fly right at all. Um, if it's bad enough though, unfortunately it'll, it'll catch on fire, um, which is less than ideal, but you know, your mileage will vary with that. That doesn't make much sense to say. I guess maybe it does. Uh, Kevin Sumner says, talking about screws too short, take a look in live stream live. I have that opened up, but it's kind of buried. Oh God. <laughs> Smoking gun and debugging the uh, AOS 503 broken X plate. Looks like screws are too short. Wow, that's not going well. Um, so yeah, Kevin Sumner seems to have uncovered a, uh, a real problem with the, uh, the new AOS 503 version in that, um, what the fuck is happening here? Why is this screw going in so sideways? What the hell? What the hell? Um, yeah, the, uh, the base plate, is, just doesn't have enough carbon fiber around the, uh, around the outsides, around the outside, around the outside. And it is, it broke on a not so hard crash. And so this is what it did to the, uh, to the standoff. Uh, but here's the, here's the real problem that, so the, the, your your this bottom plate here this little sandwich plate or x plate whatever the hell you want to call it never ever 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 countersink these ever that's a terrible idea certainly don't countersink it when there's only this little tiny amount of carbon on the outside this is this is ridiculous i i i, I cannot believe that chris did this um yeah, and, and so this happened on like the very first crash to Kevin, and, and this is just poor design. This is this is a terrible, terrible design decision um, that hopefully Chris Rosser will fix as soon as possible. Um, yeah, this is this is real bad, really, really, really bad. Um, and it looks like the screws are also a little bit too short uh, because they were only able to to have enough thread engagement to do this nonsense. So. Yeah, that's uh, that's no good. That's no good. No, 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 no good. Um, we talk a lot on here about how, um, you know, like frames are. Frame design is a very nuanced thing, and like the the livability of a frame is a big deal, right? Like making a frame that handles vibrations uh, really, really, really well is all fine and dandy, but that will not really have anything to do with how well it does in crashes, right? Because like the vibrations, so the, the vibrational analysis that Chris does is looking at what happens from vibrations coming from the motors and what happens to the energy coming from the motors wobbling around, which is great, but in crashes, energy comes from a completely different direction, and I don't think you're ever going to be able to simulate um, crash data because we just crash these things in such absurd ways. And you know, we're hitting concrete, we're hitting poles, we're they're tumbling on the ground while they're rotating. It's just there's there's just too many different directions that energy can come with into the frames to figure that out. Um, so yeah, you got to be a little bit careful with with that. 
And this is a perfect example of that, right? Like, like I bet you Chris made that decision to countersink those holes and shrink that X plate up because it would save a little bit of weight and it wouldn't affect the, the vibrational um, uh, characteristics of it. But it'll certainly affect the, it in crashes. And as we saw, I mean, it, it blew up on the very first hit that wasn't even a hard one. Um, so, yeah, frame design is, uh, is very difficult. It's very, very, very difficult. I've stayed away from it for a long time because of that. It, it's just, it's, it's a lot. And um, so, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm amazed that any of the frames hold up, to be honest. Uh, Brains Baked Beans tagged me. He says, uh, you need to not get countersunk. It's tidy looking, uh, but it pushes the lateral stresses into the carbon. Uh, standard button head will get better clamping pressure and prevent that standoff shear. Um, and then Chris Taylor tagged me. Uh, he says, uh, just built the AOS 4, and it is amazing. Uh, 23 millimeter shorts, 6 minutes on a 1054S pack. Really good power to weight. Very cool. Uh, that is a massive motor. Uh, that's why it has such good power to weight. That is a huge, huge, huge motor for a 4-inch rig. Um, my ideal motor for 4-inch is actually a 2004, 2004. Uh to keep the weight down a little bit. The uh, the 23 millimeter shorts, <clears throat> that must be like a bomb going off when you uh, when you hammer the throttle. Look at that, we got two of them on. It only took 15 hours. Okay, so now I have to do it all over again with the fronts uh, and figure out what direction I want them to be rotated in. Or clocked is the right words word journey droid says countersunk is optional upon order oh well that's cool so kevin's the problem he ordered the wrong one it should not be an option uh that is a terrible option to offer um yeah that is a that is a bad idea to offer that as an option that 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 is gonna break every single time you crash hard every single time that's that's outrageous Egregious. Uh, so on these ones, I have them set up with that facing inward. So I guess I might as well do the same thing on this one. That's facing inward. The other option is to go 180 to have that facing upward. Could, would these work on the bottom? Oh my God, they would. Oh, that's wild. If you had a really short motor, you could actually mount these damn things on the bottom. That's pretty cool. Uh, okay, so if I mount it like this, then that piece is on the outside. No, I'm gonna do it the other way. I'm gonna do it the other way because realistically, this is gonna get slammed into something either going forward or backwards. Probably not gonna go in sideways. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to put it on like that. Uh, what else is cooking, friends? What are you guys up to? What's everybody doing? I, it doesn't look like many of you guys are going to Rampage, um, which I get. It, it's incredibly expensive. Uh, I'm not... So So in, in previous years, I've hung out at... Uh, well, I mean, I've, I've basically worked uh, Micro Mayhem... Uh, they, they've they've previously paid me to be there and given me a, a campsite. Um, this time they're not doing either one of those things, uh, but they did comp my ticket, and I could just walk in, um, which is great. And and I'll I'll set micro I'll gladly set micro mayhem up for that. Um, but also that they, they have uh, there's always a, a flight line manager at micro mayhem, so. This year, I'm not just going to be at Micro Mayhem the entire time. I'm probably going to be there a, a good amount of the time. But, uh, yeah, this time I'm going to be kind of hanging out and, and walking around a little bit more. Maybe I'll actually fly for a change, which would be nice. Probably not. but um, So, yeah, if, uh, if you want to 
hang out with me at Micro Mayhem, you're going to have to, like, say, yo, when are you going to be there? Or just, like, yeah. Maybe we'll do, like, a little hangout or something like that. I don't know. But, yeah, I'm not just going to be there the entire time like uh, like previous years. But type Rampage in the chat if you're going to be there. I know Kevin's going. Um, it's really expensive. It's uh, the the for the I I still cannot believe that that they continue to put the event on. I I don't know how they do it. I, I really don't. Um, it's it, it's just it's got. It, I know it's so expensive to to put the event on. Um, so big pat on the back to to Rotor Riot for continuing to do it at all. Bob Bruce says, uh, putting in a few packs while I listen so I can fill up my woke snail VTX and try to make a video for YouTube that no one will watch. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much the FPV YouTube experience when it comes to anything other than product reviews. <laughs> oh, balls. Here we go. All right. One more. And... Yeah, these screws are just barely... I think these are actually like M2 by 9.5. These are, these are a little long. Oh, man, that is... Yeah, that is kind of jamming into that silicone a little bit more than I would like. Um, okay, so there is a little bit of a trick. If if your screws are pushing into the silicone a little bit more, so it's always not always. It's it's usually the inside screws. The outside screws usually have plenty of an air gap above the stator base. Um, so with the outside two screws, you can run longer. What I'm going to do is on the inside two screws, uh, I'm going to run M2 by eight. So M2 by nine on the two outsides because they have plenty of room above them. Uh, but then where the windings are close to the top of the mount base, I'm going to run the M2 by 8s on the bottom. So let me, uh, but let me get this last duct on here. They're just, yeah, these are, I mean, let me just make sure that these really are. Yeah, it says on there M2 by 9. I, I think they're like M2 by 9.5 though, or like 9.4 or 9.3. Uh, so... Yeah, let's get this going here. So outside two screws are going to be M2 by 9. And then insides are going to be M2 by 8. Uh, I have to do this every once in a while. I, I don't love doing it, admittedly. But it's certainly better than um, the alternative, which is either the motor explodes or the ESC explodes. Or the um, or the motor rips off. If your screws are too short, the motor will rip off. If your screws are too long, it'll catch on fire. <laughs> uh, so you know, pick your failure. All right, there we go. Kevin Summer says uh, maybe we should have a Discord room for Rampage. Um, if there were a bunch of people going, I would say yeah. But it looks like me, Kevin, and Rockcrawler might be the only ones going. They're here tonight, actually. No reason not to do that. I feel like I did that in the past. Uh, I'm gonna put it into the um, into the open text channels. New channel name: Rotor Riot Rampage. Text not private. Create channel. All right. There's a Rampage channel. I typed yo into it. Uh, over on the Discord. Link to the Discord is on uh, cidfpv.com. Sometimes I forget the forget my own goddamn website, which is just my pilot handle.com. Here we go! M2 by 9. Driving into an iFlight Zing. Very sadly, uh, discontinued 1504-3900. So we're going to do the two outsides. Extra long. 
And now I've got to go through and remove all of these inside screws because I am worried about them uh, touching the windings through the little bit of silicone there. Brands McBean says, wow, never going to help Drew and Druid in the future. Why, what did he say? Droney droid, what the hell? What happened? Take it easy. Everybody relax. Everybody relax. What's happening? What's happening? Everybody chill. Everybody chill. It's all good. We're all friends here. We're all friends here. It's just FPV, man. We're, we're flying toy helicopters in parking lots. It's not, it's not, it's not that serious. Don't let it become that serious. How about that? Uh, off axis. You 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 calm down too. Off axis. I'm not gonna just blame Droney Droid. I'm bl I, bl I blame everybody. <laughs> All right. Taking out the rest of these, and then we're gonna go M2 by eights. And the, the big thing I wanna do here is weigh this, but we're gonna put this into beta flight first um, and get a couple things out of the way that I like to do with the props off, like motor direction and, and shit like that. Um, so yeah. Here we go. Last two, and then I need to dig into my little stash of screws over there. And all right, cool. Looks like rock rock crawlers going. Are all of the people posting in there going? Please only post there if you're going to avoid confusion. <laughs> Here, let me do this. Post in that thing. It says, say going if you're going. I said it in all capitals. I screamed it. I, sc I screamed it at the people. M2 by 8s. Here we go. We need eight of these bitches. One, two, three. Get out of the way, big long screw. Four, five, six, seven. Oit. O i g h t. Oit. Are these uh, roughly the same? I hate when I put a bunch of screws in, and half of them look really weird. Now these are roughly the same. Uh, got some of these little iFlight screws. Yo, iFlight makes some sexy M2 screws. They don't make them, but iFlight includes some sexy M2 screws. They're like, they're like a mix between socket headed and uh, button headed, and they have this like attractive little like polished part and like a little 45 degree angle just take my word for it oh god stroganoff i remember beef stroganoff Butterson says one of those days we got to get out uh west coast throwdown somehow yeah i would love to man god i would love to that and uh what's the big racing event io love to get to io I'm hoping that rigs like this one um, can get me more live flying gigs. If, if I can get more live flying gigs, I'll be able to actually start traveling. Um, a, because I'll hopefully be at these gigs, but B, because they actually pay well. Um, so yeah, if I, can f if I can continue to get more and more tied in with sports organizations that can use, um, that are doing live streams and need a drone in the air, which is all of them, because it's just the most insane perspective ever. Like, when I do these cycling events, pe like, there are people that don't even care about the sporting event. They're just, like, freaking out about the drone. 
They're like, oh my god, I don't, I don't even care about the athletes. I just like to watch you fly around. It's insane. Like, that, you know, that's the move right there. Get some new people interested in your sporting event by having a maniac inches off the competitors. Practically cutting their heads off. No, we don't do that. We don't do that. We're very respectful. Um, one of the, uh, one of the cyclists actually, who had a, a, a helmet mounted, uh, GoPro, he sent me the raw file from it and he was one of the front runners and it's real cool, man. He, he's got a couple really good shots from his helmet of, uh, the AOS Cine just kind of like coming in and like, ha it's, it's so stable. Holy shit. I didn't realize it. Like he, um, I, I've talked to a bunch of the riders and they've all said, like, that they're not freaked out by me at all because of how stable, like, it looks. And they're just like, yeah, it, it's I'm, I'm really confident because, like, I can tell that you're confident. And, like, I get it, but, like, to see some of his helmet cam footage, like, the AOS Cinna just comes in. It just comes in and you're just like, boom. And it just sits right here. And he's, like, rocking back and forth, pedal and pedal and pedal. And, and there I am, just, like, locked in space just because... You know, I'm framing up a shot, you know what I mean? And, and like, by framing up a shot, the whole point is that you lock yourself in space and just, like, stay in that exact spot. And it's it was just, it's so cool to see, um, to to kind of see that from, from third person. That was that was really slick. I'm, I'm super appreciative that he sent me that. I'm going to try to get the actual raw file from him. And, uh, and, uh. Yeah. Stop it! Off access and Dreddy Druid. Stop it. Right now. That's it. No more. No more. Uh, Aerospace53 says, Do you have an affiliate link for RDQ? I do not. Unfortunately, RDQ is kind of stingy with who they set up on their affiliate program. And you have to have like 10,000 followers and, and worship Satan or something. Um, so yeah, they won't give me one. Uh, but to be honest, they're my least favorite of the top four stores. I really prefer GetFPV, uh, Newbie Drone, Pyro Drone uh, over Race Day Quads. Um, for reasons completely outside of uh, them not giving me a, uh, an affiliate link. Look at that, yo! It's done! Damn! That doesn't look bad at all. Feels nice, too. Feels solid. All right. Moment of truth. Thank you, Drony Druid. Just, just stop. Just neither one of you guys say anything else to each other or about whatever you were arguing about. Just like <laughs> leaving it. Um. Here we go. Ooh, she a fat girl. 180 grams. 179.4. Let's weigh the uh, the box frames. 179.4. This is not a super fair comparison because there's a TPU chunk on here for the uh, uh, Insta360 Go, but... Oh, God! Oh, my God! Talk about fat! 188. This does have props on it, though. 188. Uh, stop, phone! 188 with props on it. The, the Cinna is the heavier... Uh, of the box frames though. Oh man, that makes me, f oh. I can't weigh the QAV because I took the motors off. Um, so yeah, wow, okay. I'm really excited about that. I I took, um, I like weighed the frame, I weighed the guards, I weighed these motors, and I just assumed that this was gonna be significantly heavier than the box frames from just doing some mental math and I must have done that mental math wrong. Uh, wow, great. I'm really happy with the weight of this. Uh, propellers and prop screws might bring this up to the same weight there. I also need a battery strap and um, I'm a grip on this. But that's fine. It, that, that thing with the right battery is sub 250. Um... And so is this. Damn. Yeah. Okay. And this has the 1504s on it, which I, I, I mean, are not like 
essential, but kind of are. Shit. Okay, great. That's, uh, that's, that's, damn. My mental math was uh, way the hell off. Okay, let's get this into, ugh. The USB port is like very obstructed by the guard. Oh, you dirty bastard, you. Uh, let's see if I can, if there's any way I can kind of finagle this. I don't think so. I think I'm gonna have to pull this guard off every time I wanna plug this thing in. Oh. All right, hold on. I have a little 90 degree thing. It would probably work. Uh, 90 degree thing. How do you go in there like that? Hey, perfect. All right, good to go. All right, so here is how to get your motors spinning in the right direction when you do a fresh build. Hook up your little USB. Get your little battery. Be careful when using these 90 degree uh, USB things. They are a great way to break the uh, the USB port off of your flight controller, which is something that absolutely does happen. Uh, you're gonna fire up beta flight and connect. And you're kind of gonna come in here to the motors tab. And the first thing that you wanna do on a fresh build is reorder the motors just in case you, you mounted the ESC in a weird direction. So click reordered mo reorder motors. In bright red text, remove all propellers to prevent injury. This is really important on everything other than a tiny whoop. Uh, and really, only one S tiny whoops. Two S tiny whoops will cut the shit out of you. Understand the risk. My propellers are removed. Which motor is spinning? That is right rear. That is right front. Left rear. And that is left front. All right, so the I did mount the ESC in the normal way. So we're gonna click save. So now the motor, motor one is in the correct motor one location, motor two is in the correct motor two location, three and four. Um, it's an easy step to kind of skip and assume and it'll bite you in the ass and you'll waste your time uh, troubleshooting problems that don't exist. So now you're gonna go to motor direction and you wanna first take a look at this little drawing to see if the motors are, if this is set up for props in or props out. I'm gonna set this thing up for props out and we're gonna save and reboot. That has nothing to do with the location of the motors. Uh, we're gonna come back into motors here and we're gonna click motor direction since we've already reordered them and props in versus props out has nothing to do with the, the reordering of the motors. We're gonna come in here to uh, uh, motor direction, understand the risks, we're gonna use the wizard, start and spin. This is gonna fire all four motors up and you're gonna go one at a time. Motor one is set up for props in right now, that's wrong, we're gonna click it to reverse it. Motor two is correct for props out. Motor three is correct. Motor four is incorrect. And you just touch, you just kinda touch the motor with your, with your finger really gently and it'll, it'll like guide your finger around it. Um, you can touch the motor bell, or the motor shaft. Um, that'll, yeah, you'll see, you'll see. Be careful, because they spin up at a half decent RPM. Uh, and then I like to, so I just clicked stop on the test and it automatically saves. And then I like to do this real quick. I understand the risks here. And I just manually spin the motors up a little bit and just check them one more time. Motor four is correct, three is correct, two is correct, one is correct. And now we're good. The other thing you can do here is move that up and down a couple times and you're looking for error. You're, a lot of times you'll get like 0.03% error that'll just pop up for a split second. That's fine. You wanna make sure that these E, E for error uh, numbers don't have like 1%, 2%, 3%. That's, that's no good. Uh, that means you're working the, the processor on the flight controller too hard. Um, and so that's pretty much it. That's everything that you need to do with the, um, with the battery hooked up and with the uh, propellers off. Everything else in Betaflight in, in this case is actually kind of already set up. I, I went through and I set my ports up, although they were already set up. This is a flight controller and ESC that were previously in a build. Um, and I pulled them out. 
This is an F7 flight controller, but I have it set up with a 4K PID loop um, as well as a uh, as well as D-Shot 300 just to keep the the CPU load under control. Um, since this is BL Heli S, though, I'm actually going to crank it up. I'm going to crank it up to 8K on the PID loop because there is um, a performance advantage to 8K. And then I'm going to come in here into the Motors tab, and I'm going to crank it up to D-Shot 600. I think that I was I was bringing those two down when I was trying to troubleshoot uh, this ESC acting funny. And I don't really need that now. Uh yeah, I had already done a tune in here. Let me just chill this tune out a little bit. Dynamic idle, we'll put it 35. Yeah, this is all like my stuff in here. Right profile, 40, 770, that's good. Throttle expo, I'm gonna take the throttle expo all the way out because at these uh, cycling gigs, I am all over the goddamn place in terms of throttle value. Sometimes I'm really, uh, really hard on the throttle. Sometimes I'm chilled out on the throttle. So there's not like a midpoint that would really make sense for this rig because I'm using the whole range. Christopher Taylor says, why, why not Blue Jay and uh, RPM filtering? Uh, so this is on Blue Jay and it is using RPM filtering. Um, uh, all right, we're going to save that. And filters are pretty aggressive, actually. My Q factor is really low. Let's kick this Q factor up to 500. So this is a this is a frame that uh, is going to be really good with um, minimizing vibrations getting to the gyro. And so I can be pretty aggressive on the filters with with this frame. Brian Nine says he meant hardware when talking about BL Heli S. I'm, I'm lost. I don't know what you mean. Uh, yeah, I'm just putting this filter. That was a really weird filtering setup there. So I'm just kind of putting it more back to normal. Uh, let me check my modes. Yep, everything looks good here. Black box air mode. Uh, no, I do want. I want black box in the forward switch position air mode is going to be on both switch positions good flip over after crash in the middle good this weird user one thing which is specific to these cl racing boards launch control i don't really need that but it's kind of fun save it and check the config real fast and accelerometer good flight name okay osd is on air mode is not permanently enabled Okay. Yeah, we're good. Uh, check the black box real quick. Gyro scaled. I'm going to put it at 1K. Save and reboot. And it does look like there's a little... I, I, yeah, i got to erase the thing. <laughs> Alright, so uh, we're good to go. Uh, I just need some propellers and to be uh, in a battery strap and some umma grip, and I'm going to do all that tomorrow. What else did we want to do here today? AOS stuff. That's good to go. We got the guards on it. They're sparkly and clear plastic. Uh, AOS 3.5 beta flight setup. Doing a newbie drone order, of course, of course, of course, of course, of course, of course, which I kind of don't need to do, but, um, yeah. Oh, 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 I, <laughs> I do need to do a newbie drone order because I need this, that's right. <laughs> I don't have the, um, so I, I have two v, uh, of the VTXs, uh, of the big boy VTXs, and neither one of them have this power cable, so I actually need two, uh, maybe even three of these damn things. Uh, for the bigger, or do I? Is it just a, it looked like it was a smaller plug, but now that I look at it, I, I think it's just a regular old Molex, which I have a billion of. Oh, it is, it is. Okay, so I, I actually really don't need to do a newbie drone order. I can, uh, I can make my own plugs for these. 
Uh, but this is just three dollars. Yeah, I mean, I have so many of these Molexes that I'll, I'll make my own cable. Okay, no, that's fine. Uh, so wait, why am I doing? I, I I'm. I'm not gonna do this order unless there is actually something that I need. Uh, okay, Betaflight's good to go. Get this little ninety degree thing unplugged. And are you guys going to completely lose your mind if I don't indoor hover test this thing? I mean, you guys have to pick. Either we work through, either we work through newbie drone a little bit, or I hover test this because I'm going to have to put. I'm going to grip on it, find a battery strap, put props on it, and that's that's going to take pretty much the rest of our time. We only have like 20 minutes left. Let let no let's. Uh, Let's hop through here. All right, so I don't technically need this, but I am gonna get an extra one just so that, uh, Freelo just says newbie drone, done. Uh, just so that uh, when I lose this one, I'm okay. And uh, I don't need these. Uh, let's do this. Let's search for walk snail and try to find what else I'm forgetting. Extra lens would be kind of nice. That's for the nano. I would really love to buy one of the V2 VTXs, but they're a hundred dollars, man. I'll wait on that. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. What do we got going on here? Ooh, 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 ooh. So these are the same cables, I believe, that DJI uses, which is great. Uh, because I need a 14 centimeter one. Uh, so that's fantastic. $11, you thieves. <laughs> Jesus, $11. All right. It has nothing to do with newbie drone. That's, uh, that's Caddx charging that. All right. So here's, uh, here's some new stuff over on uh, newbie drones website. Uh, Cinelog 35 V2. That's interesting. I wonder what they changed. Um, this style of frame really won't work for me because it's a pusher and it's a shallow pusher. So basically it's as a pusher, it's like this, right? You can think of it like this. So if I'm flying along, it would be flying like this. Um, if I'm flying along and the propellers are here with just the tiniest little bit of protection, if, if a cyclist comes up and bumps me like this, that propeller is going to go right into them. Um, I need I need rigs that have protection on the bottom here because realistically, I'm not going to slam into someone. And, and if I slam into the someone, the props are not the the biggest thing. It's the whole you know the whole rig is hitting them much more often. And what's happened both times now that I've had um, anything happen, it's that a rider pushes into the into the quad. Um, so yeah, it's all about the protection here, back here, to keep the, the propeller off of their helmet or their jersey or, or whatever it may be. Um, so yeah, these pusher these pusher rigs don't really work. And to be honest, I, I don't like the pusher rigs in general. Like having the, having the propellers hanging out of the ducts really low, like you land and then you can't take back off. It's just, it's just silly. Um, the box frames are pushers but they are pushers with really good separation of uh, the propeller and the bottom part of the guard. So same kind of deal. If, if the rider comes up here, there's a ton of space between the tips of the propellers and the bottom, the, the, the back corner. So it's not, yeah, it's safe. It's going to bounce off and, and, and we're going to be flying away. Uh, so, yeah. I wish that I could, uh, I, I, the other, like, two days ago, I started thinking, like, why don't I try one of these, uh, why don't I try one of these Cinelog or uh, Fox Whoop or all these new, and then I, I just started thinking about it. I was like, right, because they're all pushers. Um, if they had a taller guard on them, it would be fine, but they don't, um, and that's kind of stupid, in my opinion. Uh, so, yeah. I don't know. The, the, the pusher thing... 
I it scares the hell out of me. Um, I guess you could make the argument that if if your concern is you're flying forward and you smash into something, I guess okay, the pusher rig is going to have more protection, right? Um, but in order to do that, like you're looking at, I don't know, I I, I don't think that's going to happen as often as like backing into something or um, or you're you're flying like this and someone reaches up. Someone reaches up at it. I had that at the at, at in Aniston at the cycling race. Some like these little kids were like jumping up at the. I'm like, yo, what are you nuts? Um, so yeah, if the more you've got down here, the more obstacles there are to prevent fingers from going up in it. Um, I don't know. I guess if you're orbiting with, with one of the pushers, if you're orbiting someone like this and they reach into it, it's it's gonna have better protection. I don't know. This is this is the shit that I think about late at night. Um, O3 air unit ND filters that is very very cool. Uh, I think there's a couple companies making these now. Uh, I don't know anything about GPSs yet, but uh, Joshua has had a bunch of info lately on GPSs. So uh, the Foxy or Donut 5145 props kebab. Uh, tested these and put out a great video about them. I suggest that you go watch it. Watch it. Uh, very, very cool. I'm I'm gonna snag a set of these. Um, Bob basically says like this is the most interesting propeller that we've had in FPV in a long time, and you should snag a set just to try them out. And I'm all about trying out wacky propeller. Just I mean I just love trying out props because. Propellers have more of an impact on flight performance than anything else does. Uh, a whole bunch of these cleanup items, if, if you're in the market for an iFlight Alpha A75, you can get one really cheap. They have a million different configurations of it. Um, this iFlight IH3 thing, I don't know, it's awful heavy. Uh, I just watched uh, Nick Burns' review of it, and the tune was pretty awful. Um, the H frame design is kind of weird too. I don't know. I, I'm not interested in this. Plus it's 560 effing dollars. That's ridiculous. Mainly because of the O3 air unit in it. But, um, these are, I'm, I'm super interested by these. I, I do need a good AIO. Um, so this looks, oh, MPU 6,000. Look at that. That's pretty cool. 40 amp. Uh, looks like it's an F4. Uh, six yards. Jesus, that's a lot. Does it have black box? Yep, it's got black box. That's great. I don't know. Um, it, 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 the big thing with AIOs is, are they going to catch on fire? And I've, I've not paid enough attention to AIOs to really know whether or not the Flywu Gokus are any good. Not to mention that this is a new one. So it, even if their previous ones were good, this one might be a steaming pile of ass. We There's just no way to know. Every single time they discontinue a product and come out with a new one, it's a it's a clean slate. And like by the time people have put enough batteries through them to actually be able to say, like, hey, this holds up, or this catches on fire the first time you crash it, uh, they've discontinued it and they come out with another one. It is incredibly infuriating. Um this is a, a, a lighter weight version. Looks like it's 1 to 2S, 12 amp. Built-in ELRS, that's great. Uh, looks like there is no built-in VTX, though. So this would actually be an interesting AIO for... I'm, I'm kind of looking for something like that. I'm, I'm looking for an AIO with ELRS built-in, uh, but without a VTX to, to pair up with these... Uh, walk snail VTX is so, but it's a hundred dollars. <laughs> Fuck off. Good God. Uh, that's, that's, that's okay. That's a lot. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Not into that. Uh, free Lojo says I'm looking at fat snail myself. <laughs> Athix says, uh, DJI and Cadex don't work together. Wire wires. Are you kidding me? Different pinout, same plug. Oh my. Thank you for telling me that. Uh, although, you know what? I probably still need one. No, I don't. No, I don't. No, I don't. It comes with a longer cable. Uh, okay. Well, I really do need one of the longer DJI cables. DJI cable. I don't know. We're going to go Vista cable. 
Tell me they have the long one. Tell me they have the long one. Eight. Oh. Twenty. What? Twenty? Oh my god. Okay. Oh, it's twelve dollars. Why are these Mippy cables so expensive? What the hell? Um... Twenty. You know, I already have one of the twenties. What I need is a twelve. What I need is... That's the wrong picture. That's like a thousand centimeters long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at that. It's the same picture between the 12 and the 20. Okay, what I need is the 12. That's what I need. Okay. Uh... Let's go back to new stuff. Free Lojo logged into Newbie Drone. Took 10 tries to get past. You're not a robot. That's weird. Uh, Brandon says, Betaflight devs just discovered that JHEMCU has its own public repo for all of its hardware, including proper target-specific uh, board configurations. That's pretty cool. Um, and they've been not communi communicating this, but it exists. They actually keep it updated regularly, too. Wow, good for them. Good for JHEMCU. Damn. Uh, okay. Uh, hey, look at this, 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 look at this. Look at that number. Holy shit, newbie drone. Thank you for, like, listening like crazy. 702 with ball bearings. I think this is the only 702. Wait, no, yeah, it is. This is the only non-happy model 702 that exists. Um, and it's certainly the only 702 with... Uh, bearings in it. So yeah, this is rad, dude. If you're trying to get your acro B uh, to lose some weight, this is it, man. This is the motor for sure. Uh, really, really, really exciting right here. Huge step in the right direction for the acro Bs to, uh, to, to lose some weight. Very, very cool stuff. Big thumbs up to newbie drone for listening to us, uh, asking for higher KV motors. Some foxier flight controllers. Wow, and they're only 40 bucks. That's not bad. I keep seeing these flight controllers that are like $80, $90 lately. Um, Holy Bro Ripper, 1404. 3,800 KV is a little bit low. No real interest there. All right, let's take a look at AIOs. Let, let's let's try to find a half-decent AIO. Who, who in chat... Kevin Summers says maybe cables are expensive because high. Oh, that makes sense. High bandwidth HD video needs precise, accurate manufacturing. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Who who knows of a who knows of an AIO that's actually worth a shit? Anybody? Uh, I need. I need. I need both a 1S AIO as well as a 4S AIO. Anybody know? Blaze Gow says Newbie Drone has some $30 iFlate box goggles on there. Uh, great for bench testing. Damn, 30 bucks. That's cheap. It's cheap to just have as like a set of spectator goggles. Um, okay, so we're going to take a, a six minute look at AIOs here. Kevin Sumner says Acon for the 4S AIO. Yeah, I have an extra. Acon AIO, and I'll probably end up using that. Um, yeah, I probably will not get another uh, 4S AIO, but I am curious if anybody has any that have been kind of bulletproof. Um, okay, so here's the Neutron. Here's the Neutron Express LRS. Uh, so I'm probably going to snag this. This has become like the reason for this order, I think. Uh, which is fine. Which is totally fine. And then, although I got to be honest, I do not, I do not love that this is only a half circle. I hate when they pop out of the grommets. Although this will make it easier to pop it back in the grommet. Um... Is this gonna clear? Oh, I can always break this off and just use that. That's in a weird spot though. So this is gonna be on a, uh, shit, I don't know. Having uh, on a cross uh, F4 is interesting, especially for digital builds. 
Yeah, I, man, Happy Model, they only have that one AIO that's any good, though. So, like, I, I, I have no confidence in them that they can make anything other than that one AIO that's worth a shit. Uh, so if there's anything else, <laughs> I'm going to get it over theirs. This iFlight Blitz is interesting, but they use this stupid daughter board here um, for the uh, for the receiver, which is just it's just insane. Uh, that's yeah, that's, uh, maybe that's the VTX. I don't know. Oh, okay, yeah, that's the VTX. I don't know. Yeah, see, they got it pinned. Like that's that's no good. Yeah, there's no reason for that. And it's BMI 270. That's a nightmare. Uh... Damn it, it sold out. So this is, this is the AIO that I was talking about a minute ago. This is like the Tiny Whoop AIO, and it's sold out everywhere. Kevin Sumner has some older iFlight Cross AIOs with Free Sky you can have for cheap free if you want them. Uh, no, I'm so spoiled by ELRS. Thank you, dude. Um, but I'm just so spoiled by ELRS. Athic says, uh, iFlight 1S is okay, uh, but blew them on my baby tooth. Um, uh, is that even on here? So, I mean, I might as well get something that's kind of cut down, right? To save a little bit of weight. Man, I cannot possibly justify spending $100. That's absolutely insane. That is absolutely ridiculous. For a fucking 1 to 2 S 12 amp AIO. Like, sorry, but that that's just... That's just insane. Okay, well, so it looks like Newbie Drone just really has this Neutron. And I mean... I can also just get a... Um, Another uh, beta FPV mm, cross style, and, and they've they've been kind of okay. Uh, Metal Dirt Skin can't vouch for it personally, but a real fast whoop pilot flies those iFlight Blitz AIOs, really. He depins the VTX and runs a Pro 32 man Nano. Yeah, like I, I, iFlight seems to make decent stuff. I don't know about the location of this. One of the things is, like, the, the ceramic antenna, if it's in a good location, it's great. If it's in a bad location, like, what a nightmare. This is $63, though. Nah, not doing that. Not doing that. The Neutron is 45 That's... Yeah, so we're gonna, we're gonna go Neutron. We'll give that a shot. Maybe it's great. Uh, what I really need are more left-hand circular polarized antennas. LHCP space u dot f l oh man i already did this search on here they don't have they don't have what i want well it's 759 i might not even do this order i i i uh <laughs> what's in here the neutron yeah i mean that, that's not like a game changer though because i can just get another beta fpv cross aio um this is kind of nice. This is kind of nice. Uh... Alright. I don't know what I'm going to do. FPV Trucker says, Sub-250 has uh, the Red Fox AIO, one with VTX, one without, made for their Nanofly 16, Nanofly 20 frames. Only problem is they don't have beta flight targets yet. Yeah, that's... I'm not... I'm not going down that road. That's super annoying. Uh, what is interesting about Newbie Drone is they have some uh, motors that nobody else does. Uh, but unfortunately, I don't need any of those motors right now. Do they have anything good in clearance? Man, they always have good stuff in clearance. Oh, interesting. Starlight. Uh, okay, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna spend some time in their clearance section to see if there's anything good. Uh, where the hell is their motor section? Is it in electronics? It's in electronics. Brushless motors. Um, so they have Axis motors that nobody else has. They have the Axis 2306s, uh, which are stout. They're kind of heavy, but they're stout. Uh, they have the Axis 2004s in the 3710 kV, which is awesome on 4S. And then they have the Axis 1404 
45 10 kv motors but they're actually sold out um yeah, I don't need... I have, I think, two extra of the 2306s. I think I have one extra of the 2204, 2004s. Um, so, yeah, there's not a super compelling reason for me to do an order on here. They do not have Pro F40 Pro 4s left. Kevin Thumbner says, How well stocked has Rotor Ryan's store been at Rampage? Been pretty good. They, they bring a ton of shit. They bring a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff. Yeah. Uh, Cause they know everybody's gonna break everything. All right, yo, uh, I'm gonna leave it there. I, I might actually do an order somewhere else uh, instead of newbie drone. Uh, we'll see. I'll have a haul all night about it, and then probably not put any order in. <laughs> That's typically what I do. All right, yo, thanks for hanging out. The the uh, AOS 35 is done. Um, I'll let you know how it is. Uh, probably fly it uh, tomorrow, maybe. Man, these arms are bendy because of these silly little M2 screws on the bottom. That's all right, though. Should be fine. Love you guys. Be good. Here comes some more flying from uh, from Miami Beach. Find a little bit of music. <laughs> Come on. That'll work. All right, guys, be good. Uh, hey, I won't see you for a little bit. Uh, no stream Friday, I'll be at Rampage. No stream Sunday, I'll be at Rampage. I'll see you guys Monday night at 10 o'clock. Do something cool while I'm gone. Later. I forgot once. Uh, I remembered once. And now I forgot. Later. <laughs>